All right, today I want to talk about Git and GitHub and credential management. So how do I log in remotely with Git when I'm using Git on my computer and I want to talk to GitHub? How do I know that I'm connecting to my account and how do I manage connecting to my account? Essentially, there's two main ways that people use. One is with HTTPS using a username and password, and the other one is with SSH keys. So I'm going to go through both methods. We're going to talk about how to work with the git config files and how to save your SSH keys so that you don't have to use a username and password in the future. All right, first of all, I have here a GitHub project. So my project folder here, uh, this is a GitHub repo. If I look into the browser, this is the repo that I'm talking about. It's something I did last year, just a very simple basic example with a git ignore file and an HTML file. Um, when I'm downloading this, I've got a couple of options here. We've got HTTPS, this is the URL, or SSH, and it's a different URL. So with H HTTPS, that's the one we're going to talk about first. This is the URL that I'm talking about. When I connect from my computer to GitHub, I'm using this URL, and a username and a password has to be passed from my computer up to GitHub. Now we've got two different config files to work with. One of them is the file that is inside of the actual project. So inside of my project, there is a folder called .git, and inside of that, we're going to have this config file. It's a file that's just called config inside of .git. Now, if I want to edit any of the things inside of here, I just use git config, and then I reference the property that I want to talk about. So I could say core dot ignore case and then leave a space and write false to change this. If I wanted to create something brand new, let's say there's two different remote addresses that I'm working with. So let's say uh, git config remote dot bubba and we want to set the URL for that. So instead of remote origin URL, I'm doing remote bubba URL and it's going to be at this address https slash slash github.com professor steve slash giddy um, or some other URL let's say uh, instead of github oh I, <laughs> I'm trying to use the terminal as if it's uh, something I can use the mouse to interact with all right, so it's a completely different URL. That's the point that I'm trying to make here. Now, inside of my config file, I've created this new section called remote bubba, and there's the URL. So if I was doing a push or a pull command, instead of using git push origin, I'd say git push bubba, and here is the URL that I would use. All right, so that's how you edit files. It's just with the git config command. Now. That's the local file that is inside my project. Right now it's set to use the HTTPS URL. That's fine. Now globally, we have another config file. Now this one is called .git config, and this one is inside of my user folder. So let's open up another terminal here, and if I said cd to my user folder, inside of here, there's going to be a file called dot git config. Let's just do ls. No, oh, we need ls. We want all the files showing up inside of here. And there it is. There's my git config file. That's the one that I have open here. Now, to work with that one, I can be anywhere. I don't have to be in this folder to do this. But I would use git config, same as before. But I have to add the flag global. Now I'm talking about this settings file. If I want to change one of the properties, we could say user.email is now going to be steve at home.org. Now typically you're going to use the email address that you have for GitHub. That's what you want to have inside of here. Your username from GitHub, your email address from GitHub. But we can set these things at a global level. Now there is with that username and password, 
If you're just using HTTPS and you haven't saved anything else and there's no credentials saved on your computer, you're going to be prompted every time you try to do a push or a pull from your repo. So back here, I'm in my project folder. This is the config file that I'm working with. And if I hadn't saved credentials, when I try to do a push or pull to this URL, it's going to say, hey, what's your username? Hey, what's your password? And I'd have to provide them. So to save us some time, what we can do is globally, we can set git config dash dash global. If I could spell it, this would go a lot faster. Uh, inside of here, instead of just setting name or email, we want to set sort of a, a default location where we want to put all of our pushes and pulls. So we're going to say URL dot, and then we're going to provide our username. Oh, sorry, HTTPS. Our username. Whatever your username is, you would put here, and then at github.com. So we're setting this as our default URL. And we could add in here. So for that URL, I want to set the username as Professor Steve. So if this is the URL that I'm going to, this is the username that I want to use. All right. Now, I don't need to do that because I'm using SSH keys, and I'll show you those in a minute. But this is how you would set your global URL. Now, I could, in theory, put my password in here as well. But that means I'm going to be saving my password in a plain text file, and that's not a good practice to follow. So I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to put my password in here. I am going to set this as my username globally if I want to use HTTPS. Then, after I've done that, I want to set up some caching for the password. And that means I will be prompted the first time to enter my password, but then after that, for whatever the cache timeout is, it's not going to prompt me again. It's going to remember the password in a hidden file in the system until that time has expired. So we're going to say config global and then credential dot helper. And that is going to be equal to cache dash dash timeout. And you can put any number that you want. Uh, if you use the number 28,800, that's eight hours. That's kind of a work day. So you could do this. You can say git config global credential.helper and then cache the response. So once you've provided your password once, it's going to hang on to it for eight hours. All right, so that's HTTPS. Now the other way of doing this, SSH, we don't have to work with the usernames and passwords. We're just going to create an SSH key. So this is basically creating a little public key that we save on our computer and then we give GitHub a copy of it and then it can say that, okay, yeah, you are the person that you claim to be. We just have to provide that password when we create this initial key. All right, let's do that. Now, on the GitHub website, they have a great um, set of instructions for doing this, so I will show you where those are. Um, in your account, so if I go into my account and I go into my settings, it's going to bring me to this section of the website. And then I want to go into SSH and GPG keys. Here's the SSH section. And this is a key that I have already uploaded. So this one is on the website. And that's why I don't have to provide username or password when I'm pushing and pulling to my repos. We've got a guide right here. This is the link generating SSH keys. So I'm going to provide this link down in the description, brings you to this page. There's sort of three main steps. Check to see you've already got an SSH key. If you do, we can just use that one. If not, we're going to create one. That's the second part. And then adding that SSH key to the GitHub account. So checking to see if they exist. Let's go back into VS Code here. I want to know whether or not these exist. So I'm going to go into my root folder. So I'm inside my user folder, and inside of there, there's going to be a folder called .ssh. 
This is a file called config that's inside of there that we will look at in a minute. But we're looking for the .ssh folder. So cd .ssh. OK, great. I've got the folder. That's good. If I do ls, list everything inside of there. Here we go. idrsa and idrsa.pub. This is my public key right here, this .pub file. That's the one that I want to make sure. I want to make sure both these files are there. If they are, I have a key that I have created. So I can use that. Or if you don't have the folder or if you don't have this file, then we're going to generate it. That's the second step. So let's say for the sake of argument that I don't have this file, I need to create it. Jump back into here. So that's our second step, generating a new SSH key. Now, they have it for Mac, for Windows, for Linux. The instructions are very similar for all three of them. We're going to run this command, ssh keygen dash t rsa dash b. Let's zoom in on this, make this a little easier for you to read. This is the command, and this has got to be right here at the very end. This must be the, U, the uh, email address that you use for GitHub. Run that command. It will go through the process to generate the key. It's going to then prompt you for a name. So ID underscore RSA. That's where we're going to do it. And you can see inside of your user folder, inside the .ssh folder, that's where it's going to create it. So you want to write out this full path like this. This is what you want to add. Just replace you with whatever your username is on the computer. So that will generate the file. You're going to be prompted for a passphrase. So this is if you ever want to change the password, if you ever want to edit the file, replace it, then you need to know this passphrase. So make it something you're going to remember, write it down somewhere. Um, so we're going to generate that file. Once we have that, um, you may need to run this eval command. This is going to start up the SSH agent in the background. So you can then run this command ssh add and this is going to add it to the keychain on mac os on mac os there is a keychain where all your passwords and keys and so on are saved if you want to see where those are if we open up the program called keychain access inside of keychain access if we go to local items and we scan down through here there it is there is my SSH key. You can see it starts with SSH. This is the key that I created that I'm using to talk to GitHub. So we have that key generated. We need to start this. You want to create that config file or edit the config file inside the SSH folder. That was the one that we had in VS Code here. This is what it looks like. Host for all hosts. Add keys to agent. Yes, use keychain. This is important for the Mac. And then this is the name of the file that we're using, IDRSA. And then the pub is the one that we're going to upload. We'll get to that in just a second. So you've started the agent, you've edited this file, you've added it to the keychain. That part is good. Then the last part is we want to add this key to the GitHub account. So I can click on the link here, or if I go back to the original page, if you had an SSH key that you wanted to use, Here's the same link going to this third step. Again, you got your choice of Mac, Windows, or Linux. We're going to run this command right here. Basically, we're going to copy the pub key, the public key file. We're going to copy that to our clipboard so that we can then paste it onto the website. Uh, if you're on Windows, this command is the exact same, except instead of PB copy, it is clip. C-L-I-P, that's the command on Windows. Now, back into our own account here, the SSH section. We click on the button for new SSH key. You're going to give it a title. You're going to paste the key in here. So the one that we just copied from the command line, we paste it inside of here and click the Add button. That will add it. And then back on this page, you will see the key that you just created. Um, if there was a password, I believe that you are prompted for the password when you go to add the key. But that aside, you will then have the key here. Once you have that, now you don't need to use the HTTPS with the username and password anymore. 
So back in VS Code, back into our project inside of here, instead of using this URL with the HTTPS, we're going to switch over to the SSH version. So this is inside my project, inside the .git folder, opening up the config file. I'm going to change this URL right here. Or we can, on the command line, we can edit it as well. Um, let's go back into a project. Yeah, this is the project one. So inside of here, I can say git config remote.origin. And then I'm going to change it to the new one, or sorry, .url. I'm going to change it to the new one. If I jump back to my repo, and inside of here, instead of HTTPS, I'm going to go over to SSH. And this is what they all look like. I'm going to copy that. They all start with git at github.com, colon, your username, and then the name of the repo. So right there, this is what I'm going to change this one to. And there we go. So I've now changed it. So this is now going to want to use uh, SSH to try and connect. And it's going to try to use that key. So if in my folder I do git pull origin, and we'll do the master branch, there we go. So I've got everything that's there. And the same thing for the push. I can do git push origin master with my key set up, and I'm good to go. All right, so quite a few things covered in there. I will provide the link to these instructions so that you have your own copy of how to do the SSH part. I do recommend setting up the SSH key. Um, you can stick with the HTTPS version if you'd like, but uh, the SSH is going to be just a little bit easier to manage once you've gone through that initial setup. You won't ever have to enter the username and password again. All right, hope that helps you out. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.